Hey everyone, my name is Brandon, and today I'm going to be talking to you about Hoffman 2. And this is the uh, cluster, the computational cluster here. You can call it a supercomputer that all of our, most of our computational research happens here. Um, but first, I'd just like to thank our sponsor, Computational Medicine, um, for all their help with uh, Big Bio. So, just an overview of what Hoffman is. Um, it's over 1,300 nodes. A node is like a computer. And these collectively have over 20,000 cores and 50 terabytes of RAM. Just for reference, your laptop probably has two to four cores and eight to 16 gigs of RAM. Um, so it's a lot of resources. Um, and what I'm gonna, uh, a lot of what I'm saying today is specific to Hoffman 2, but um, the software it uses uh, to manage everything is called the Univa Grid Engine. And a, uh, Few other clusters use this. If you go to another school or another company, you might see this. Uh, they might also use Open Grid Engine, which is very similar to all the stuff I'm going to show you today. But some clusters use what's called Slurm. Uh, it has the same functionality, but with different functions, and I won't be discussing that. So just an overview of what these nodes are structured like. Um, you have your system here on the left. Uh, this is your laptop. You typically want to avoid doing your research here just because your laptop's like probably maybe not powerful enough or you want to uh, keep it safe from what you're doing. Um, and uh, if you have a Hoffman 2 account, which you get through your PI, you will SSH or log into what's called a login node. And this is uh, your first point of entry into the Hoffman 2 system. And this is where you'll do all your basic tasks like submitting jobs or doing some basic uh, file editing, file manipulation. Where the real computation happens is on these nodes here um, with the, the N and then the big number. This is actually what they're called on Hoffman 2. Uh, you'll be submitting jobs or running jobs on these nodes uh, that are separate from the login node. So just one point I wanted to clarify is that the computation happens on the, those nodes, not on the login node. They don't explicitly stop you from doing computation on the login node. And there have been cases where people do some pretty intense stuff on here and ruin everyone else's time. So avoid running your analysis on login node. Uh, as for the storage structure, this is uh, something you really want to keep in mind. There's a lot of places to store your files, what you're going to be working with. And they each have their own caveat um, on how you should use this. So starting from the left, you have your home directory. This is where you first start off uh, when you log in. And this is accessible through the home variable, if you want to reference this. Um, the total amount of files you can store here is up to 20 gigabytes. And um, there's also a number of file limit, which is, uh, I'm not quite sure, but I'll add it to the, I think it's 20,000. But I'll add it to the uh, file sheet. It's not that much. Uh, one thing I want to note, though, is that the persistence here indicates how long it should last in that storage, like whether it's marked for deletion by the Hoffman staff. And these in your home directory are not. So just for a suggestion, this is where I would keep uh, my own scripts that I write, uh, some small programs that I install. I keep them in the home directory. Um, moving to the right, you have the scratch directory. This is accessible through the scratch variable. Um, this has much more storage, two terabytes, but very important here is that officially, uh, files older than 14 days are subject to deletion by the staff. Uh, I've had files that have lasted there for much longer, but it's a gamble, so you don't want to <laughs> stick, thing stick, stick things there for too long. Uh, where you would want to keep big data um, safe and uh, for a long time, and maybe to be safer than Scratch, is the project directory. And this will be uh, specific to your lab. Your PI will purchase some um, storage on Hoffman, and they'll have a project directory. And this is where you store your lab-specific files, and um, they're persistent. So you can keep things here safely. And they're typically backed up as well. If they're not backed up, it'll indicate it in the path that it's a no backup uh, drive. Um, and then moving more to the right, you have some more temporary forms of storage. You have the work directory, which a lot of people don't actually use on Hoffman. This is, uh, each user is allowed to use 200 gigabytes here. It's, but like the Scratch, but, and even worse than the Scratch, the files are subject to deletion after one day. And I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure they're much more strict on this limit. So this is where you would keep uh, like intermediate files for things that you're running if you need to just store something that a program uses and then deletes. Um, and you're out of space in Scratch, you can use the work directory. Um, and to use that, you can just make your own directory and work and then just uh, output things to there. 
And then finally, you have the temp directory. Um, this one I would avoid using, but just to let you know about it, uh, it's 100 gigabytes per node that's allocated. And you can access it through this uh, variable here, uh, tmpdir. Um, this variable is only available if you're uh, within a job. So you can't access this when you're on a login node. It's um, assigned to you when you submit a job. Um, and the files that you put in here are only in existence while the job is running. They get deleted when the job is done. Uh, the reason why I think you should avoid this is because the scratch directory um, uses flash memory, which is very fast. So I'm not sure that the tempter uh, is using that. So if you have space on Scratch, um, always opt to use that for your intermediate files just because it's fast. Can I make a comment about Scratch? Yeah. Um, so um, if you touch everything in your directory, like once every 14 days, usually it won't be deleted after that. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a trick that a lot of people do, that they write scripts that will touch the files, meaning it will update the last modified date of the file every, mine's every week. Um, and the files stick around for a pretty long time. But when they do updates to the system, which everything is maybe is once a quarter, 50-50 uh, chance they'll just clear out everything. Yeah. So be careful with what you keep in there. <laughs>